happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. Uh, so lots of great things in the news. I love the Chinese. You know, there is zero COVID policy. It's kind of, uh, it ain't working so well. Uh, the Shanghai Disney Resort has now shut down because uh, they're worried about people transmitting virus there. And so there's a bunch of reports that they're not letting anybody leave the resort unless uh, they test negative. Everybody's locked away and I'm getting uh, panic calls from the, the mountain, <laughs> the mountain resort. We're hoping the Magic Mountain isn't hiding a bunch of people. Anyway, we'll see. Very funny that they're trying to do this. I, as I've said all along, trying to be zero COVID is impossible. Uh, what is interesting uh, is that Europe, remember I said Europe has had this peak, Europe is beginning to come down. Uh, the United States is still low, uh, but I think we're about to see what I've said all along, that we're probably gonna have a surge coming up uh, uh, soon. If you look at the rest of the, the world, uh, Korea, Japan are still pretty hot. New Zealand's got a bit, bit of a rise, and Europe remains sort of the hottest part uh, uh, in the rest of the world. In the United States, it's been flat. Hospitalizations have gone up slightly 3%. Known cases are maybe down 2%, but the test positivity is beginning to go up. It's, it's actually gone up uh, by 8.5% last week. And so we're beginning to see what something I've been saying all along is that we're gonna slowly but surely see kind of a rise going up in the next few months. And I think the best evidence for that is if you look at the case number in the United States for the first time, it's not falling, it's really, it's flat. And this is a, a heat map where you can see light yellow is everything's good, but as it turns orange to red, it gets hotter and you can see m multiple parts of the country now are be beginning to have an increase. Texas remains very low, and that's pretty typical. We follow the Northeast by several weeks, but Harris County is at one of its lowest ever, 23 cases per 100,000, down from 53, only four admissions per 100,000, and of course, our good friends in Dimmitt County, home of the Javelinas, they're doing very well. Way to go, Dimmitt County. Uh, now in the Texas Medical Center, uh, we're still looking good, although our, our test rate's down to 2.7%. And our hospitalizations continue to drop now uh, down to 62 per day. So that's actually very, very, very good news. But here is the problem that I've been telling everybody is going to happen. It's beginning to happen. This is the wastewater across the country. And blue means it's going down, and red, orange, and yellow means it's going up. And you can see that nationally, wastewater data begins to show that it's on the rise. And if you look at the specific map, you can see where it's really going up is Northeast and now the Midwest. And I have a little, <laughs> Europe is where it starts, moves over to the Northeast, and now it's transiting to the Midwest. We are undoubtedly going to see an increase. And the best evidence for that is if you look at our own wastewater data for the first time, it's going back up. So it's pretty clear that in the next two to three weeks, we're going to see a rise in COVID case, case number. And so what's driving this? Why is this happening? Well, there are two major variants that have come from the United Kingdom and two in the United States. So I'm gonna try and spend a little time on these variants. I know it's a little bit esoteric, but uh, it's worth doing. So BA5, as you know, has been the dominant variant here, the Omicron variant here in the United States. But there are two ones, BQ1 and BQ1.1, that are now driving our increase, this green and black. And those are uh, mutants that first were detected in the United Kingdom. So again, this sense that go for, starts in Europe and it be, per, because of travel comes to the United States. We have two other variants, uh, the 4.6 and BF7 that are also growing. Those are variants that have developed in the US. And if you look at the world variant num sort of composite, the bars that have the European bars, are, you can see are really dri being driven by this light um, green, which is BQ1.1. That's the major variant, and the United States has now picked that up. So in the, 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 pan, the, the part of uh, Europe that has been being driven is being driven by those variants that are now uh, here in the United States. And I, <laughs> I showed this diagram. It's a, bit, it's a bit confusing, but it's really key to see the evolution. You can see in the United Kingdom, the, the two variants have actually come over here. They are BA5 variants, and they have now come to the United States. 
These two variants came off of BA4, those developed in the United States, and then BA2 has the variants that have developed in Singapore and India, which we talked about before, XBB and BA2.75. Now, the really uh, interesting phenomenon about evolution of viruses is this is just a, a diagram that shows where the point mutations are. These are ones in the United Kingdom, these are the ones in India and in Singapore, and despite the fact that they're all in different parts of the world, the virus is replicating, the same mutations are being selected for. So I circled N460K, it's in the United Kingdom, it's in Singapore, and it's in India. So why does this happen? This is a phenomenon called convergent evolution. Lots of changes are happening, it's kind of like a, if you pull a, uh, if you do a roulette wheel and the ball falls into one, it's beginning to fall in the same place because those mutations are specifically helpful to, for immune evasion. So as long as we're getting vaccinated and people are getting uh, infected, there's only so many ways the virus can escape, and so those escape mutants are the ones that are being selected for. So worldwide we're seeing this, and if you look at the growth advantage, uh, the ones that are most, most advantageous for growth are these very same ones I've talked about, BQ1, 1.1, and XBB. So we're seeing a, a phenomenon that as long as there's viral replication, uh, there's going to be continued mutations. And, and the point that uh, Peter Hotez has made many, many uh, times is that where countries are under-vaccinated, where there's low vaccination rates in India and Africa, there's going to continue to be uh, evolution of the virus, even in, in our part of the, you know, in the United States, where there's people who are susceptible and the virus keeps replicating, there will be, continue to be mutations. And so this has to be a worldwide solution. And one of, the, one of the solutions is to get more and more people vaccinated. And so if you've gotten, if you haven't gotten vaccinated, get vaccinated. If you've been vaccinated, get boosted. And we have to help countries uh, throughout the Pacific Rim, in Africa, in India, who are struggling to get vaccinated. We need to get them vaccines that are effective for them. Uh, two interesting studies I wanted to call attention to. One was, uh, one of the things people have asked, like, what's the mechanism of, of uh, sort of the long COVID, severe complications? There was an interesting paper in Science. As you know, the virus enters the ACE2 receptor, which is a, a receptor that peptide ag angiotensin II binds to this. This receptor is present in vascular tissue and lung tissue. It's very important for the control of blood pressure. And what they found was people who were hospitalized often developed autoantibodies. Their own antibodies, immune system, attacks angiotensin II. That, in fact, leads to problems with oxygenation, troubles with blood pressure, thrombotic events. So that's a major breakthrough to understand why we're seeing these complications. And it appears that the virus is inducing an autoimmune phenomenon uh, to really respond to one of the sites where it binds to. Another study about long COVID, uh, Scotland looked at a large cohort, 33,000 patient, 33, patients who had laboratory confirmed infection and compared it to 62,000 people who were laboratory confirmed not to be infected. So they had a really good cohort. And what they found was that 6% of the people who were infected still had not recovered and 42% and had only partially recovered. So lots of long COVID in Scotland. Uh, the, the data aren't that much dissimilar from what we've seen here where one in four people are affected uh, long term. The, the severely infected ones, the 6% that uh, had not recovered, were more likely to be hospitalized, were older, had previous respiratory disease and other uh, comorbidities. People who were, had asymptomatic infection did not have adverse outcomes, and here's important, vaccination was associated with much reduced risk of severe disease. So when people still ask me, well, you know, what's the point in getting vaccinated? Why should I get my kids vaccinated? Long COVID is getting to be a bigger and bigger problem. And so why would you even want to expose people to that? So get your kids vaccinated, get vaccinated and boosted. So a bunch of shout, shout outs this week. First of all, uh, Houston Walk to End Alzheimer's will be taking you place uh, tomorrow, November 5th, at the University of Houston. We're the largest team, Baylor College of Medicine, and we're the, so far doing the best on fundraising, but there's still a chance to sign up and donate, so please do that. Uh, Dr. Miriam Ch Chaco was honored uh, as a distinguished professor of pediatrics in OB-GYN. She received the J.P. McGovern Foundation Champion in Women's Health and Wellness Award by the Women's Fund, and this award recognizes her dedication to adolescent 
health uh, throughout our career. Uh, Harris County started a mobile mammography unit. This is great, uh, in partnership with Baylor College of Medicine. A 45-foot mobile unit uh, for intends to screen 6,000 women for breast cancer. So it's a 3D mammogram unit uh, in, in a truck. So that's great. And, and I always like to end with news from Dimmick County. Uh, so, of course, I read the Dimmick County, Carrizo Springs, Haviland, my favorite paper. Who needs the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times when you got this paper? And of course, this is, I'm really excited to say that Saturday is the 2022 Homecoming Parade in Carrizo Springs. And I want to congratulate uh, Dimmick County Judge Francisco Ponce, who has been named the Parade Marshal. Congratulations, Judge. So have a great weekend, and I can't wait to see you next week.